T. Harvaker, who is a businessman, author, wealth coach, and motivational speaker, states, give me five minutes, and I can predict your financial future for the rest of your life. Eka does this by identifying your money and success blueprint, and he say this so confidently because he studied the psychology of rich people and differences between rich people and poor or middle-class people for years. We all have a personal money blueprint ingrained in our subconscious minds, and it is this blueprint, more than anything else, that will determine our financial lives. Money was scarce throughout Eka's childhood, so at 13, he began his work career. As a teen, he delivered newspapers, scooped ice cream, sold novelties at fairs, and sunned lotions at the beach. After a year at York University, he decided to take time off to pursue his dream of becoming a millionaire. In his 20s, Iker was a success junkie who had read all the self-improvement books and attended all the educational seminars. He started working on his business ideas and started more than a dozen different businesses. Unfortunately, he failed at several businesses. But regardless of what he did or how hard he worked, he just couldn't achieve success and kept wondering when he was going to make it. He said that I had heard of this thing called profit. I just never saw any of it. After yet another failed business venture, he was forced to move back into his parents' basement. He got some advice from an extremely rich friend of his father's. And that advice had changed his life. His father's friend, too, had once been a disaster until he learned a vital truth. Rich people think differently from the average person, and those ways of thinking determine their actions and therefore determine their results. Copy the way they think, and you will be ready to become rich yourself. Aker has since then changed his mindset and life as well. He studied the psychology of rich, wealth creation and success and learned mental techniques and strategies to recondition his mind to think in a rich person's way. He then realized that his businesses were failing because they were started with poor mindset. He decided to attempt yet another business. So, when he opened a retail fitness store, borrowing $2,000 on his credit card, he swore to himself that he would not quit until he left the business as a millionaire or more. The business was so successful that he opened 10 stores in only two and a half years. He then sold half the company shares to a Fortune 500 company for $1.6 million. So, we'll start with a very basic thing. If we look at a tree, it has a visible thing and an invisible thing. Visible things are flowers and fruits on the tree, and the invisible things are the roots embedded in the ground. In life, our fruits are called our results. So we look at the fruits and we don't like them. There aren't enough of them, they're too small, or they don't taste good. So, what do we tend to do? Most of us put even more attention and focus on the fruits, our results. But what is it that actually creates those fruits? It's the seeds and the roots that create those fruits. It's what's under the ground that creates what's above the ground. It's what's invisible that creates what's visible. So what does that mean? It means that if you want to change the fruits, you will first have to change the roots. If you want to change the visible, you must first change the invisible. So all the problems in our life, such as money problem, health problem, weight problem, it's not an actual problem, these are all results, means those fruits, the real problems, are in your roots. And here comes the important part. The biggest disadvantage of being born in a middle-class family is that since childhood such seeds are planted in our mind, and they don't allow us to become rich. No doubt, you've read other books, listened to tapes or CDs, gone to courses, and learned about numerous get-rich systems, be they in real estate, stocks, or business. But what happened? For most people, not much. They get a short blast of energy, and then it's back to the status quo. Finally, there's an answer. It's simple, and it all comes down to this. If your subconscious financial blueprint is not set for success, nothing you learn, nothing you know, and nothing you do will make much of a difference. So, we will now focus on roots, meaning mindset, especially financial roots, so that you can understand your money blueprint. What is a money blueprint? Let's consider the blueprint for a house, which is a preset plan or design for that particular home. In the same way, your money blueprint is simply your preset program 
or way of being in relation to money. The better your money blueprint, the better your financial life. I will explain to you using simple formula. PTFA is equal to R. Our money problem that is our results, it starts because of our irresponsible money actions, and we take actions according to our feelings, and our feelings come from our thoughts, and our thoughts come from our programming. That is, the seeds that are sown in our mind from childhood. Eker has shared an example to clear this concept. Stephen was earning over $800,000 a year and had been doing so for the past nine years. Yet he was still barely scraping by. Somehow, he managed to spend his money, lend it, or lose it all by making poor investment decisions. Whatever the reason, his net worth was exactly zero. When Eker asked Stephen about his childhood, Stephen shared that when he was growing up his mom always used to say, rich people are greedy. They make their money off the sweat of the poor. You should have just enough to get by. After that you're a pig. So this was his money blueprint. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out what was going on inside his subconscious mind. No wonder he was broke. He was verbally conditioned by his mother to believe that rich people are greedy. Therefore, his mind linked up rich with greedy, which of course is bad. Since he didn't want to be bad, subconsciously he couldn't be rich. Stephen loved his mom and didn't want her to disapprove of him. If he were to get rich, she wouldn't approve. Therefore, the only thing for him to do was to get rid of any extra money beyond just getting by, otherwise he'd be a pig. That's why his subconscious mind did not allow him to take decisions to become rich, whether he should do savings or make good investments. As for Aker, in his own life after a slow start, he began doing well in business, but never seemed to make money with his stocks. In becoming aware of his money blueprint, he recalled that when he was young he used to hear from his father that the stock market is bad, how stupid the whole system is, and how you have a better chance of making money playing the slot machines in Las Vegas. The stock market is bad, it had become his blueprint, and this is why he couldn't make any money in the stock market. He was literally programmed to fail, programmed to unconsciously pick the wrong stock, at the wrong price, at the wrong time. Why? to subconsciously validate his money blueprint that said, stocks stink. When he started digging out this massive toxic weed from his inner financial garden, he began getting inundated with more fruits. Virtually the day after he reconditioned himself, the stocks he chose began to boom, and he continued to have amazing success in the stock market ever since and understood that how easy it is to earn money from stock market. That's why when two people see the same rich person, they can come to two different conclusions about him. One would think he might be rich dad's son, and the other would think he might be a hard-working man. We all have different types of wiring in our brain regarding money or investment. It's programming, and that doesn't allow us to take right decisions. This is why our brain's wiring must be remade. Most people are initially hesitant when starting to invest in the stock market because of the fear of financial loss. However, Almost all of billionaires' wealth lies in the companies they own, in stocks, real estate, and other assets. Let's come to the point, just as is done with the personal computer. By changing your programming, you take the first essential step to changing your results. To reprogram or reset Money Blueprint, we would first need to understand the five wealth files of rich that are quite different from poor people and middle class, and essential in reprogramming your financial blueprint. Rich people believe, I create my life. Poor people believe, life happens to me. It is imperative that you believe that you are at the steering wheel of your life, especially your financial life. If you don't believe this, then you must inherently believe that you have little or no control over your life, and therefore you have little or no control over your financial success. And that is not a rich attitude. It means that rich people believe that I create my life and poor people believe life happens to me. There are so many lottery tickets sold worldwide. Who do you think is more likely or playing the lottery? A rich or a poor person? It's usually poor people who spend a fortune playing the lottery. They actually believe their wealth is going to come from someone picking their name out of a hat. However, the mind of rich people is completely opposite that we do not need to depend on anyone and we will create our own life. On the other hand, a poor person loves to do three things. Blaming, 
justifying and complaining. When it comes to why they're not rich, most of them are professionals at the blame game. The object of this game is to see how many people and circumstances you can point the finger at without ever looking at yourself. They blame the government, stock market, employer, parents and spouse. It's always someone else or something else that is to blame. The problem is anything or anyone but them. If they aren't blaming, you'll often find them justifying or rationalizing their situation by saying something like, money's not really important. Let me ask you this question. If you said that your husband or your wife, your boyfriend or your girlfriend weren't all that important, would any of them be around for long? I don't think so, and neither would money. The reason the poor are poor is many do nothing but complain. When people complain, they focus on what's wrong with their life. What do you focus on expands, so they'll keep getting more of what's wrong. When people are complaining, they are attracting crap into their lives. Complaining is the absolute worst possible thing you could do for your health or your wealth. So blame, justification and complaining are like pills. They are nothing more than stress reducers. They alleviate the stress of failure. Think about it. If a person weren't failing in some way, shape or form, would he or she need to blame, justify or complain? The obvious answer is no. And if you want to think like rich people, then you have to give up these three things. Rich people play the money game to win. Poor people play the money game to not lose. Mostly they enter in such a game, which has a lot of upside potential, whereas poor people avoid games in life or just play not to lose the game because they are afraid to lose. Poor people play the money game on defense rather than offense. Let me ask you, if you were to play any sport or any game strictly on defense, what are the chances of your winning that game? Most people would agree, slim and none. Yet, yet that's exactly how most people play the money game. Their primary concern is survival and security instead of creating wealth and abundance. So, what is your goal? What is your objective? What is your true intention? The goal of truly rich people is to have massive wealth and abundance. Not just some money, but lots of money. So what is the big goal of poor people? To have enough to pay the bills and on time would be a miracle. Again, let me remind you of the power of intention. When your intention is to have enough to pay the bills, that's exactly how much you'll get. Just enough to pay the bills and not a dime more. So, if you are playing a fence, meaning you are trying to save the goal as well as score more goals, then your chances of winning will increase significantly. Rich people manage their money well. Poor people mismanage their money well. Imagine you're walking along the street with a five-year-old. You come across an ice cream store and go inside. You get the child a single scoop of ice cream on a cone because they don't have any cups. As the two of you walk outside, you notice the cone wobbling in the child's tiny hands and all of a sudden plop. The ice cream falls out of the cone onto the pavement. The child begins to cry. So back you go into the store, and just as you're about to order for the second time, the child notices a colorful sign with a picture of the triple scooper cone. The child points to the picture and excitedly screams, I want that one. Now here's the question. Being the kind, loving, and generous person that you are, would you go ahead and get this child the triple scooper? Your initial response might be sure. However, when considering the question a little more deeply, the response would be no, because why would you want to set the child up to fail? The child couldn't even handle a single scoop. How could the child possibly handle a triple scoop? The rule is, until you show you can handle what you've got, you won't get any more. You must acquire the habits and skills of managing a small amount of money before you can have a large amount. Here is a sample distribution percentage per classification. Remember, we are creatures of habit. Therefore, the habit of managing your money is more important than the amount. Rich people focus on their net worth. Poor people focus on their working income. Poor people prefer to be paid a steady salary or hourly wage. They need the security of knowing that exactly the same amount of money is coming in at exactly the same time, month in, month out. They are afraid of getting paid based fully or partially on their performance and terrified of testing their true value in the marketplace. But what they don't realize is that this security comes with a price and the cost is wealth. Poor people trade their time for money. 
The problem with this strategy is that your time is limited. This means that you invariably end up breaking important wealth rule which states, never have a ceiling on your income. If you choose to get paid for your time, you're pretty much killing your chances for wealth. Rich people prefer to get paid based on the results they produce, if not totally, then at least partially. Rich people usually own their own business in some form. They make their income from their profits. They work on commission or percentages of revenue. Rich people choose stock options and profit sharing in lieu of higher salaries. There are no guarantees with any of these. In the financial world, the rewards are usually proportionate to the risk. Rich people believe in themselves. They believe in their value and in their ability to deliver it. Poor people don't. That's why they need guarantees in the form of paycheck. Rich people focus on opportunities. Poor people focus on obstacles. There were two friends who had participated in a cycle race, and after the race was over, they felt hungry. So one friend said that there's a fruit stall where fruits are available, let's get the fruits. But the other friend said that the queue for fruits is very long. You can go and have that. Then that friend went, and finally he got the fruits. This means that one friend was looking at the rewards that is fruits, and the other was looking at the obstacles that is the long queue, and the one who was looking at the rewards one. Rich people see opportunities. Poor people see obstacles. Rich people see potential growth. Poor people see potential loss. Rich people focus on the rewards. Poor focus on the risks. Generally speaking, the higher the reward, the higher the risk. Because they constantly see opportunity, rich people are willing to take a risk. Rich people believe that, if worse comes to worst, they can always make their money back. Poor people, on the other hand, expect to fail. They lack confidence in themselves and in their abilities. Poor people believe that should things not work out, it would be catastrophic. Because they constantly see obstacles, they are usually unwilling to take a risk. No risk, no reward. Rich people take responsibility for the results in their lives and act upon the mindset, it will work, because I'll make it work. Although poor people claim to be preparing for an opportunity, what they're usually doing is stalling. They're scared to death, hemming and hawing for weeks, months, and even years on end, and by then, the opportunity usually disappears. Then they rationalize the situation by saying, I was getting ready, sure enough, but while they were getting ready, the rich guy got in, got out, and made another fortune. Action always beats an action.